Let us all stand to our feet and receive the woman of God, Elder Tanya Blevins. She doesn't need no introduction. She's our own little baby. And we're going to lift her up as she lifts up Jesus in this place today. Come on and let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God. Father God, we just thank you right now for just being in this place and for resting on us right now, God. Lord, move me out of the way, oh God. Lord, let your word come like fire, oh God. Saturate us right now in the name of Jesus, that we will be saved, that we will be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The scripture has already been read and I'm going to I'm going to spring from these particular verses beginning with verse 21 and it says, "If so be that ye have heard him speaking about Christ, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, say conversation, conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24 says, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And I'm going to take it a little bit further. Verse 25 says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And the title, Those That Need One, is You Gotta Talk to Yourself. Praise God, praise God. And the testimonies that have gone forth have already preached my message. I can just sit on down. Mercy God. But we're going to take a look at our text. And we're going to move forward. And in this particular letter, Paul is writing to the Ephesus church. Immorality was so prevalent that it was common to see Greek gods set up all over the city. It was a common thing. The city was a hub of prosperity. And as new converts were trying to follow the examples of the apostles, Paul wanted to reassure them and help them to stay focused by using the concepts of holiness and service to reveal God's power to change people to be used for the kingdom. And that's why it's important to have the right kind of people around you. Because right. everybody that's speaking is not designed by God to speak into you. Everybody talking ain't meant to be speaking into you. Be mindful of the words you receive from other people because they are important. They have power to either bring life or death. During biblical and days of dynasties, whatever the final word of the leader was, it was law. Whatever they said, that's what went. Wasn't going into a voting system. Nobody had to go in and do a press conference. Whatever the leader said, that was that. That's just how powerful words are. And so we have to believe as believers, we have to be extra careful, extra careful, extra careful not to abuse the power of words. What I love about the Lord is that he will speak some words that may hurt, but he will come right back around with words of healing. 
So, but how many of us do that? How many of us speak words that may be truth yet hurt and then come back with words of healing? How many of us are leaving people wounded by our words and sticking out our chests as if we have received some spiritual badge of telling it like it is? Are we speaking hard words to help folks out yet leave them bleeding and exposed after their verbal sessions with us? We have to be mindful of the words that we speak, not only to each other, but to ourselves. What are we saying to ourselves? And I'm going to tie this in with the theme in a minute. So we have Paul here giving words of encouragement, and he's teaching us in chapter 4. He is reinforcing what has already been taught to the church at Ephesus to make sure that they don't get sidetracked by the messages of the gods all around them. See, they had been involved in all of this pagan worship. And you know, when you, got, when you got, just got out of something, you have to change your surroundings. Because it's easy to slip and slide right back into it. Mercy God, somebody ain't hearing that. And what I, what was, I found that was so interesting that even with his imprisonment, the church was vulnerable to the messages of how the goddess Diana could provide for them and empower them. And see, Paul, he knew their vulnerability. And it was heavy on his heart. Even though he was in chains, he understood how vulnerable the church was. So he penned these words to encourage them. And he said to them, he says, don't, you, you didn't learn of Christ through every kind of impurity. He says, you heard and you were taught of him. He says, you know who Jesus is. So he encourages them and he says, let go of that old life that does not exist anymore. Sometimes we want to hold on to old stuff, stuff that's already dead and gone and corrupted, but we trying to hold on it, hold on to it and resuscitate it and breathe life into it. And we wearing ourselves out when God is saying, I put life in you. I want you to go forth and breathe life into something else. But we trying to hold on to that dead stuff. Paul says, you are no longer the same. You're no longer thinking the same. You're no longer living the same. You're no longer worshiping the same. You said, he said, you have encountered a new life. Yeah. Yeah. So we may not have Paul to write us letters, but we can speak those same words to ourselves. We, just like the church of Ephesus, can get so overwhelmed with what society pushes in our faces as acceptable and successful. The enemy even has a standard in the church. I know I ain't gonna get too many amens on that, but the truth is the truth. They say if you got this many members, if you drive this, if you make this much money, if you know this pastor, if you dress like this, if you eat only that, then you really saved. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what's been told to me. Hmm. But you got to shut your ear gates to that foolishness. Because Paul says we got to let go of the old ways of being empowered. He says if folks ain't lifting you up and encouraging you to do better, let them go. If every word that comes from their mouths in front of folks and behind closed doors make you feel like you are less than worthy of the purpose God is giving you, let them go. It hurts when you got to cut it off, but you got to let it go. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Paul says you are a new creature in Christ. He said in verse 24, you are created in God's image. He had to remind the church you are created in God's image. You ain't created in the image of that statue that's sitting out in the town hall. You're not created in the image of the priests and all of these fake folks. He's not the sorcerers. You are created in the image of God. 
Know who you are. Know who you are and act like it. And his words may seem a little harsh, but Paul was so fervent in this. There was a burden in his spirit because he saw what was going on around them. And they were like sheep in the midst of wolves. Jesus. Lord have mercy. It's time out for listening to, you know, fake news. It's time out for listening to fake news because there is the good news. God gave us a way out of this negative talk and negative self-thinking. His name is Jesus, and I know it sounds cliche, but you better get to know him because Jesus is real. His blood is real. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You want the Holy Ghost. You better get in a relationship with him. You better let go of that old stuff. Let go of that old thinking. That stuff is killing you. It's killing you. You can't even see who you are in God. Because you holding on to that old stuff. Everybody telling you what you used to do. Used to do. That's in the past. Don't go back. Paul says you are a new creature. I remember when I was little, I used to talk to myself. Oh, glory to God, and people thought I was crazy. But when I got older, I started talking to myself in a different way. And I started saying, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the cream of the crop. You are the apple of God's eye. Hallelujah, glory to God. You can do this. You, nothing is impossible with God. If you just step out on faith, it ain't about you. It ain't about your gifts. It ain't about even your own self-anointing. But it is by the Spirit. Spirit of God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You got to talk to yourself. You got to tell the words of the enemy that he is a liar. You are a new creature in Christ. When the enemy says your dreams are dead, tell him he is a liar. When God has created a great work in you, know that he will perform it until it is accomplished. Don't give up on God in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When family, friends, church folks say you're not good enough or saved enough, tell them you are fifth and wonderfully made. Tell them your God don't make no junk. Oh, glory to God. One of my favorite Bible characters is David. You got to encourage yourself. Sometimes David was going through stuff. It seemed like none of his wives understood. His children, they were going crazy. He said, I got to encourage myself. Glory to God. We wait on other folks to affirm us. You got to close your ears to them. Stop letting people point you in the direction of your past. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God, because you are a new creature. You are created in his image. Paul said, therefore, reject all falsehood, lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, and spreading rumors. Do you know you can even spread rumors about yourself? You can sit there and say so much negative talk about yourself, other folks will start believing that craziness about you. Jesus. Paul said rejected. He said it's false. It's fake. Glory to God. Because if you can't see no good in you, how can somebody else see it? Ladies, you want that young man? You quit sitting up there putting yourself out there for cheap. Young men, you want that young lady to want you? Quit acting cheap. Quit talking cheap. Know who you are in Christ. 
The old stuff is gone. It's dead. Leave it in the grave. Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's time to break free from curses. Paul was persistent in encouraging the church because they were surrounded by messages of what they used to do. And as I come to a close, I want you to know this. When you don't have the right messages before you, it can be easy to slide right back into the life you once gave up. You can start doubting God's power and authority that he's giving you. And you'll start slacking and slipping. Hmm. And before you can even blink, you're wondering, how did I even get here? How did I get here? I thought I had left this place. The mind is so powerful. The tongue is so powerful. James says it's a small member. But it is so powerful. Sometimes in the midnight hour when the enemy is speaking and telling you that God is not going to do it. You just came back from the doctor and you got yet another negative report. God is not going to do it for you. You have to speak to yourself. You just got to start talking to yourself. The when the enemy says that your life ain't worth nothing, you just need to just end it right now. And I don't even know who I'm speaking to right now. But you got to start speaking over yourself. Talk to yourself and say that I am worthy. I do have a purpose. There is more to me than this. Stay encouraged, people of God. Keep your focus on Christ, from whom you have gained a new life. Hallelujah. Didn't your heart just burn? Yeah.